In this video, you are going to update your cycle syncing knowledge. But before I dive in, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to click that bell to be notified every time I post a new video on menstrual cycle health, fitness, and nutrition. And if you don't know me yet, my name is Omega Zumpano. I'm an exercise scientist and menstrual cycle educator. And this is my binder on recent research about the menstrual cycle. And in today's video, we are gonna use some of this research to back our new findings for cyclical fitness. The term cycle syncing was coined and trademarked by a pioneer in cyclical health, Alyssa Vitti. And I've pulled up her article on cycle syncing your fitness. And in today's video, we're gonna go through follicular, ovulatory, and luteal phase recommendations. And like I said, I'm gonna give you an update on all of those. So in this article, she says that we benefit from higher intensity workouts in the first half of our cycle in the follicular phase. But this 2021 article said that we actually have greater muscle fatigue and more delayed onset muscle soreness in the early follicular phase. So we actually wouldn't benefit from doing high intensity workouts while our estrogen and testosterone are low but still rising. So my update here would be to not jump from your period straight to high intensity workouts because our hormones just don't support that and we will get more delayed onset muscle soreness and have more muscle fatigue and strength loss. Now in the ovulatory phase, Alyssa mentions that our basal metabolic rate is much lower in this phase. So she says to compensate with that by doing higher intensity training. But I take issue with that because the recommendation of doing high intensity training because your basal metabolic rate is low is akin to the old adage, calories in, calories out, which comes from a pro-diet culture. And you and I both know that losing weight and even keeping fit is more than calories in, calories out. There is an intricate hormonal process that takes place. If I was Alyssa, I might mention Cook and colleagues article and talk about how the high ovulatory phase testosterone is linked to more motivation in athletes instead of urging us to do more HIT because we're burning less calories. Or maybe even use this 2004 study by Zhu and colleagues showing that when estradiol is high, as it is in the ovulatory phase, free radicals produced by exercise may be easily eliminated. So that means that when we are in our ovulatory phase and we have higher estrogen, we can actually work through some of the muscle damage that we have thanks to estrogen. If your cycle syncing knowledge is already getting updated, type update in the comments below and we will continue on to the luteal phase. In the beginning of this article, Alyssa states that we fatigue faster in our luteal phase. But in fact, the article to support this point studied heat stress in the menstrual cycle, not solely physical stress and fatigue. So let's look at what the research actually does say about exercise and the luteal phase. The same 2021 article that I mentioned earlier by Romero Parra showed that when estrogen is high in the early luteal phase, we can actually do more strength and have less delayed onset muscle soreness and strength loss. The same article also showed that we have more opportunity for muscle damage and strength loss as we come to our late luteal phase when important hormones like estrogen and testosterone are no longer at the party. This 2021 study by Willett et al. researching estrogen's impact on substrate utilization which is just the body using fat, carbs, or protein as a fuel source, showed that when estrogen is higher, so is the fat burning potential during exercise. So from this study, we can deduce that when estrogen is higher, so is our fat burning capacity. So estrogen is highest in our ovulatory and early luteal phase. So that's when we have a lot more fat burning potential. And if you didn't know already, using lower intensity exercise is actually the best way to utilize fat. When we go above that, we're actually using sugar in the form of glucose or glycogen as a substrate to use while we're exercising. So all my cycle syncing updates would include lowering the intensity of your workouts in the follicular phase by doing more reps, less weight, or even making more rest time between your sets that can really help that delayed onset muscle soreness. 
In the ovulatory phase, you can tap into your fullest capacity for strength and motivation. And you can also push yourself the hardest in this phase. So you can get creative with your workouts. In the early to mid luteal phase, you can continue doing your strength workouts, but in the late luteal phase, you wanna drop that intensity back down again to avoid burnout and to avoid delayed onset muscle soreness. So if you are a personal trainer that wants to go from not really understanding the menstrual cycle to being confident when discussing the menstrual cycle so that you can be seen as a hormonal expert inside of your community, I would love to show you how to do that. You can book a call with me using the link in the description below. Make sure to like this video, subscribe, and leave me a comment telling me your biggest takeaway. And if you want to get the latest in research-backed nutrition for the menstrual cycle, watch this video next. I'll see you there. Bye.